Okay, we're testing the base 99B. Okay, the line begins with the word Dudaim, and if you go forward, you'll see a parenthesis and then a uh, brackets, like the round and the square ones, and then a colon, and then there's Aleph Reish, which is Amar Reb. Almost smack in the middle of the page. You'll see a the large part? The large, uh, it's a few lines down from the larger side, of, from the larger lines. Oh, yeah, the fourth, fifth line. Fifth line. And there's a parenthesis in the brackets, and then the colon. Okay, so now the next uh, eight lines or so is going to be a discussion about, or a list of uh, praises and benefits, if you will, of, or results of, accomplishments of learning Torah properly. And I guess it comes in the context of the previous Gemara, which we began with earlier, about respecting res- respecting Torah. So, we might say that until now, we've been talking about Torah, um, uh, proper belief in Torah, proper respect for Torah, understanding that Torah, every part of Torah is divine, and every part of Torah is, uh, has a lesson, and every part of Torah is meaningful. And now we're going to get to a person's attitude in his learning to Torah. I think that's the proper way of putting this here. And if a, pers- if a person has the correct attitude, then there's all these kinds of wonderful things described about that learning. So what's the correct attitude of learning Torah? What's the correct attitude? What's the correct frame of mind? So says the Gemara, Amar Rabbi Alexandri, Rabbi Alexandri says, Kola oisik l'shma, Anyone who studies Torah for its own sake. What does study Torah for its own sake mean? This is the crucial thing. Once we understand what the word Lishma means, everything else in Gemara is going to follow. And we're going to see how everything that follows is not merely nice rewards, because they're not really rewards even, they're just descriptions of accomplishments. But rather, when we understand what the word Lishma means, we'll understand how all the things that we're about to, about to describe are consequence. So what does Lishma mean? Literally translates for its own sake. A simple, like it's the simplest reading of it is to paraphrase the Rambam, Maimonides, when he describes the laws of Teshuvah, the different levels of motivation for one's service of Hashem. He says that the highest level is someone who does uh, love that, uh, does service of Hashem out of love. I think he uses the example of like Avram Avinu, if I'm not mistaken. And is, the line he uses is, Oisa emes mi peneshu emes. Does the truth simply because it's the truth. There are other motivations. A person can learn Torah because of reward. A person can learn Torah because it makes him feel gratified. A person can learn Torah because he's scared God's going to punish him. Uh, and you can get even to loftier uh, uh, motivations. Different types of love for Hashem. And different, uh, the loftiest of them all, as the Rambam writes, there's Oisa Emes Pishu Do the truth because it's the truth. So why am I studying Torah? Because Torah is the truth. So I'm studying Torah. What else is there to do? It's almost like there's a negative. What else is there to do? If this is the only truth, then what am I doing something else for? Maybe in a more elaborative version of that comes in the Al-Tarabah Tanya at the end of chapter 5. In chapter 5, the al is de- dedicated to defining the uniqueness of studying Torah in that it's the only ability we have to ingest divine divinity. In a mitzvah, you engage in a divine act, whereas Torah... You take in divinity. There are like a, there are other mitzvahs which have that in a physical sense, like eating matzah. You're eating a divine. You're eating the mitzvah as opposed to putting it on. But here it's more uh, in the psychological sense, into your personality, into who you are. You start taking Torah in, and it starts shaping the way you think. So the div- divine ideas become part of your mind, be part of your memory, part of your psyche. And Alter describes it at length in chapter five. And then he says like this. And he talks about how the Torah and mitzvah is based on the way it's based on his description of chapter 4 and 5, 4 describing mitzvahs and 5 describing Torah, and how they lead and, and uh, accompany a person into the world to come to Gan Eden, into life after death here in this, here in this era, pre messianic time. And then he's, and he says, This is for someone who studies Torah Lishma for its own sake. So, what is Lishma? So he cites the Priyat Chaim, Priyat Chaim, which is a um, work by 
Rabbi Chaim Vital, who was the prodigal student of the Arizal, who trans, uh, transcribed most of his teachings. Not the only one to transcribe his teaching, but most of his teachings are described, transcribed by the Rabbi Vital. And he says like this, Lishma, what's the definition of studying Torah for its own sake? Chaim, this is, Kedei Likshar Nafshe Hashem, to bind his soul with God, Idea Saga Satayra, through the comprehension of Torah, Ish Kifi Sichlai, each person according to his capacity. Dictionary definition. What does it mean to do Lishma? It means I'm studying Torah. Why? Because through every line I comprehend, I connect myself to, to the Infinite One, to God Himself. That's the definition. It seems simple enough, but it, it has to be stressed here. Because the Gemara does not go on to say, with all the praises that the Gemara is about to say and all the beautiful accomplishments that happens through his Torah study, the Gemara does not go on to does not say that these are accomplished if a person understands Torah correctly. Of course, a person has to. That's not what the Gemara says. The Gemara doesn't say anyone who studies Torah properly or someone who uh, gets the depth of the very deep meanings of, doesn't say that. Studying Torah Lishma. And here the Al Terba says it. He says two things at once. He says, it's, it's through Asagar Satara, through the comprehension of Torah, as opposed to just reading. I'm connecting to God through understanding, right? We just finished saying that in Tanya in chapter 5, he talks about Torah, the uniqueness of Torah is that you take Torah and in, you're ingesting divinity, you're bringing divinity into your psyche. That only happens if you understand it. If you're paying lip service, it's holy in certain regards. Like, for example, a person could read Chumash without understanding a word, and he still studied Torah because he said holy, he said divine words. But that's not to be compared to study of Torah where a person's in, taking in the ideas. So it's true a person has to understand it. But it's ish kifi sikhlai, each person according to his capacity, not to the depth of Torah. Yeah, Torah is infinite. Yeah, right? So the, it's not about, it doesn't say here, the deeper one understands, the more he will accomplish. None of that. There are certain accomplishments within the realm of Torah study that require deeper knowledge, and the deeper the knowledge, the wider the knowledge base, the more accomplished. For example, just a basic level, a person wants to respond to halacha questions. The broader his knowledge base is, the deeper understanding he has of the text, the better he'll be able to answer the halacha questions. That's not what the Gemara is talking about here. The Gemara is talking about a much more deeper and a much more fundamental part of Torah, which is available to each each person according to his capacity. So long as he's understanding the Torah with the right frame of mind, which is Lishma, for its own sake. Why am I understanding these lines of Torah? Not because they mean anything to me, not because they make me feel good, not because I'm going to get rewarded, but simply because this is divine ideas and I want divine ideas in me. Finished. And if that's the case, it doesn't matter how deep I understand, not deep I understand, so long as I'm understanding to the best of my ability, the level of understanding, not the level of depth, but the attitude. That's the key here. And with that attitude, you can always tell us now the beautiful things that, uh, that are accomplished with Torah study. Which means, in theory, a person who could answer all halakha kind of questions, understand Torah at a very deep level, and that's one person, but he's doing it because he wants to show off his, halakha, his, his knowledge in Torah. And the other person understands a fraction, a, dec- a decibel point of what that person understood, understood, but in that one line, the person understood, he had the right attitude and he's doing it for the sake of connecting to Hashem, and he accomplishes all things Gemara is about to say. Okay, talk like that. Sorry? Okay, talk will come later in the Gemara's and he knew many halachas and so on about the oil Zarek, but did have his Western Nebula Shema. Yeah. Of course, you have both, and that, that's, that's a Galagus Rock. He has both. He has the wisdom and, of course, that's the, the proper way. Connection yeah. to Hashem. It's not either or, because you have uh, all four possibilities. Yeah. Okay, she says about this. So, Kala Isaac Teresh anybody who studies Torah Lishma with this proper attitude, Mesim Shalem creates peace, the Palmali Yishal Maila, in the realm of above, the Palmali Yishamata, and the realm below. Peace in all worlds, spiritual world, and the lowly realm. Shanemar, the verse reads, Oi Yechazik Bimouzi, when or if one were to hold on to my strength, Torah is called Oiz, Torah is called Oiz, the Amoyit, and God gives strength to his people. What did God give? What's the strength God gives to his people? It's Torah. So, Oiz, Yaxi, Moiz, one who holds on to my strength, says God, Yasa Shalom Li, makes peace to me. Shalom Yasa Li, peace I'll makes to me. A double peace expression for me, once in the heavens, once in below. Why is that? Why is Torah studying Torah for the sake of, for the sake, for the Shema, for the sake of uh, connecting to the divine, bring such peace? As we finished learning in the last 10 pages, the ultimate purpose of all of creation is the bringing coming of Mashiach. And the coming of Mashiach, as we described at length, is the ultimate union 
in the relationship between God and man, the medium of that relationship is Torah. And when a person absorbs Torah information, that is the ultimate union, as actually it says in Tanya there in chapter 5. This is a union that does not exist in any other realm. The union of Torah, of Torah knowledge, in which divinity is inside of me, and I encapsulate divine ideas. It's a union like no other. So the ultimate union between God and man is through Torah. And if that's the purpose of everything, then when the purpose is fulfilled, everything falls into place. In any project, once the purpose is reached, and every other piece finds every other piece finds its peace. Every other element of that project finds its peace when the ultimate piece, yeah. piece of peace, thank you. Different spelling, but you got it. <laughs> every other element of that project finds its peace, finds its place when the ultimate objective is achieved. So if the ultimate objective of the entire project known as creation and reality for that sake, including the spiritual world. The ultimate objective is the relationship between God and man through the medium of Torah study done in such a way that's Lashma for the sake of heaven, where you're developing a relationship with Rosh- to Hashem through that Torah, then it brings peace. It brings harmony and like a, an equilibrium, if you will, to all of reality. Because that was the whole point. And likewise, with the follow-up with the next uh, statement. Shalom, is idea of completeness and shalom has the word peace and, and, and wholesomeness. It's correct. The shalom, the word shalom, mean, without the width above the without above means it means peace or complete wholesome, and they go together. Yeah, right? When you when you feel fractured, then there's a lack of peace, a lack of harmony. When you feel whole, that's in this peace. So when the whole picture is coming to its uh, synchronicity, it's coming to its to the not the epitome, to the epicenter, to like the to the ultimate goal, then everything falls into place. That's Sorry. That's correct. Yeah. They bring like a completeness and yeah. Rav Amar, Rav says, Ki'ilu bana platin shamayla b'shamata. Not only did he bring peace to the world, to the upper worlds and lower worlds, we're adding a layer. But he actually brings a palace, builds a palace in the world above and the world below. So it's not just that they bring the world to its completion. That's one level. But even more than that, you actually take the world to new heights. In the connection forged between God and the Jew, it's not just that the world now comes to its ultimate purpose, bringing peace as a word to the world, like Rabbi Alexander said. Rabbi adds another layer. You build a palace, metaphorically speaking, a palace for Hashem, a palace for the Jew. So it's not just that you bring the world to its ultimate completion, its ultimal fullness, but you actually take it to a whole new height, spiritually speaking. Shinemar the verse reads, and I will place my word in your mouth. That would be the word, study of Torah, right? And it's my word in your mouth. Right, so even though it's your understanding, but because you're doing it for the sake of connecting to me, when you speak those words of Torah, it's my words. It's an incredible idea, God's saying, that you have the capacity to speak my words, so long as it's the Shema, so long as you're studying for the sake of, not for yourself, then it's your words. Taking your, then you're plagiarizing God. If you're, doing, if you're studying Torah for the sake of your own personal ba- gain, then you're plagiarizing God, which is, as the Gemara says in Yuma, is dangerous. But if a person is doing it for the sake of connecting to Hashem, then the words of God are speaking through him. And the verse continues. So when a person does that, and in the shadow of my hand, I, I, I cover you, or I conceal you, says God. And the word of... does elaborate what this means. Yeah, it's probably referred to mitzvahs, but we'll leave that for now. And the verse continues, for what purpose? Why am I putting the words in your mouth? And why am I protecting you? So that you can, uh, like to mean to like to implant or to like, um, it's used for um, putting vines in the ground. That's what it's used for, it means to like plant. So you're planting, you're, you're upholding heaven and earth at the foundation of earth. In other words, by you putting my words in your mouth, by, take, by speaking Torah, while keeping in mind that it's my Torah and, connect, and doing it with proper intention, you implant into heaven and earth. So it's not just you bring the world to its completion, but you actually make a whole new growth in heaven and earth. Amr Eish Lakish, or Rabbi Echanan, are two different versions of the next statement is from Eish Lakish, Rabbi Echanan. Moreover, not just you bring the world to, to its completion, <clears throat> and not just you bring the world to new spiritual heights, but af megin al kala ilam kulay, it even protects the entire world. What's the af? Why is even? If the world's in peace, what, is in, what do you need uh, protection for? It's off. It's adding. The world's already in peace. What's the uh, protection? 
um, but let's just come through the words cool as remember the verse reads but sell yod de kasicha that I'm the, the previous verse which said that I put my words in your mouth and you implant in heaven and earth the verse also says that I hide you in the shadow of my hand so hide the shadow of my hand means a protection so perhaps it means uh, perhaps it means that uh, till now we're talking about perfecting the world and then we're talking about bringing the world to new heights all of that is divine energy invested within the realm of creation perfected creation and then creation at new heights but it still remains within the realm of creation right you're building a palace in this world or in the spiritual world whereas we are talking about a shadow of god's hand a shadow of god's hand metaphorically is something which is outside that protects so perhaps it's mean it means to say that we're reaching not just the levels of divinity that can be invested in this world at its highest at its peak but actually that which transcends the world as well a level of infinite that transcends perhaps that's what he's referring to which is why it's referred to as a shadow right as opposed to like protections from the outside everything he's talking about till now is within the realm of creation bringing peace in the world building a palace in the world right so you're taking the world to whole new levels but it still remains finite in terms of it being a created being and now he's referring to protection that's from a shadow from the outside as if to say there's a transcendent truth of godliness that you tap into that's beyond even perfecting the world or even taking the world to new heights Maybe that's what it means. The Levi Omer and Levi says, Af, the Kad of Asagula. It even brings the redemption closer. Right? Which is clearly the sum total of all of this. You're bringing divine truth. If the, you're bringing peace, taking the world to new heights and tapping into the infinite all through the medium of your connection and your, your relationship development with Hashem through the study of Torah and comprehension of Torah in such a proper fashion, then that is, uh, ipso facto, the coming of the redemption, coming of Mashiach, as we described at length in the previous uh, classes. Here. Remember, as the first reason, he back brings the verse to connect the idea of study Torah to bringing redemption. And you shall say unto Zion, you are my people. Zion, you are my people, is like a, a redemptive idea where God's telling the people and Zion that you are my people. But it's done through Lamar, through speaking, through the study of Torah. And likewise, the Gemara now uh, keeps on going to... Okay, we, we might say actually the Gemara is switching gears a bit. Because if we hear the Gemara, doesn't make contingent on the manner in which in your attitude, but rather on the result. But I mean, it's still now we're talking about your own study, Torah study, and that you should do it with the proper uh, attitude that you're doing for the sake of the proper intention, you're doing for the sake of connecting to Hashem, and thus the results are all these... Uh, this perfection of the world and taking the world to new heights and reaching levels of infinite which the sum total of which is the redemption but now the Gemara gets to studying teaching somebody else Torah and over here the Gemara doesn't make contingent on the way in which you teach maybe so it, it could be the Gemara is kind of saying that even if your Torah study is faulty but if you have another some if you if you can inspire somebody else to study Torah properly then that th that too is wonderful even if you're uh, lacking your own Torah study which you mean maybe something like this a person shouldn't say to himself look I know a lot of Torah but my attitude towards Torah study is wrong I'm too egotistical and I'm doing it for the sake of ego and you know what I don't want to impose that on somebody else I'm not going to teach Torah because it makes me egotistical the more perhaps is saying no, no 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 even if you're failing in the previous statements still teach somebody else because when you teach somebody else what they get becomes an extension of you even if you yourself are failing Perhaps what the Gemara is saying. Like the famous story, there was a... In the times of the first and second Chabad, particularly when Jews were living... The first Chabad uh, pushed a lot, that, without getting into too much of the history, but the first Chabad pushed a lot that Jews should move out of the big cities and go to farms. It was easier to keep uh, Judaism, it was easier to make... It was, it was easier to uh, negotiate with the government without getting in the way of, of the peasants all kinds of complicated political things. But the bottom line is they were encouraging Jews to loot. They made the deal with the government to have these big swaths of land where they're able to farm and live in peace without the neighbors, non-Jewish neighbors bothering them. And the second Chabad Rebbe would send his, his, uh, some of his students to go from town from, to these villages. And they had two functions. They would raise money for the institutions, going to these places. And likewise, they would bring words of Torah. They were like traveling uh, Hasidic teachers, traveling shluchim, you know. So there was one such chassid who was doing this and he came to the second Chabad Rebbe during one of his travels and told, told him in Yiddish that I feel like an onion. 
And he meant, what he meant to say is that uh, every time I go and I teach chassidus and people praise me for how well I teach, it gets to my head. I start to feel egotistical. <laughs> so I use the expression, I feel like an onion. So in Yiddish, the Mitlerva told him, be an onion, but keep on teaching chassidus. In other words, watch it, somebody else suffer because you're becoming egotistical. So your self, <laughs> right, your, your, your sense of humility is actually part of your ego trip. You, know, you want the perfect Torah study, and unless you have your perfect Torah study, you're not going to teach somebody else. That's not the proper attitude. So perhaps what the Gemara is doing here now as well, after telling us the proper attitude to Torah study on such hot, lofty levels where a person studying Torah without any ulterior motive but for the sake of connecting to Hashem, now the Gemara gets into saying, look, even if you're not doing that, but if you're teaching somebody else properly, that's also worthwhile. Maybe that's, that's the sh- shift here in the Gemara. So let's see. Amr Eishlakash Eishlakash teaches, Kalmalamad is ben chaveri Torah. Anybody who teaches his friend's son Torah, meaning teaching somebody else, Mala Lava Kosov, the verse considers it, Kilu Aso, as if you made him. You've made him. You've, it's, there's other places where it says Kilu Yolde, it's as if you've given birth to him, like a, a spiritual son. But here it's even more than that. It's not just you made him, in, he's like your you know, progeny, but you've made him. You've made him into who he is. Right? So, in the context of the way I'm framing it, maybe it means um, all the accomplishments that he's going to accomplish. Because he'll study Torah properly, even if you're failing to study Torah properly, you have a hand in that because you made it, you've taught him, you've taught him Torah. Shinemar's the verse reads, This is uh, from the last six parasha, not from the six parasha. Um, where it describes that Avram Avinu had to travel, and he traveled with his wife and his nephew, and he traveled with all of the people that he made in Haran. That's what the verse says, he made, what is he, what do you mean, Avram made people? He taught them about godliness, by teaching them about God, teaching them Torah, he made them. So, he's deriving from here that anybody who teaches somebody else Torah is as if he made them. It's as if he made them for that mitzvah. Anyway. Rebelezer, Amir Belezer says, Ki'ilu asal on the It's as if you made them for the words of Torah. So it's not like you made them, period, but you made them in the context of their Torah learning. He's limiting it a bit, but maybe it's actually expansive. You can think about it in two different ways. But either way, one statement is, is it's as if you made him, and the next statement is, as if you made him for the words of Torah. And I'd like to think a little bit about what the distinction is. But anyway, the quotes the verse to back this up. Shemar the verse. Shemartim as is divrei abris azoyis vasisam oisam. You'll keep uh, the words of my covenant. Right, this is in uh, Dvarim. Vasisam oisam, and you will do them. So the literal meaning is, is like I just translated, it, and you will do them. But vasisam oisam also means you will make them. As if to say, if you keep my covenant, you will have um, you will have made them. You will have made those people who you are promulgating the covenant with, meaning by teaching others Torah, keeping the covenant going, it's as if you made them. But it's only as if you made them... Oh, sorry! I mistranslated that. Back up a second. When it says, Ki'ilu asan, it doesn't mean as if you made the people. Ki'ilu asan of the as if you made the words of Torah. The actual words that this person's studying. It's not just that you made the person. is not limiting it. Let's back up. Eshlakish says, if you teach someone else Torah, it's as if you made them. You made them into who they are. The Belezer adds, not only you made them, but you've actually made the words of Torah. Because I signed the plural, yeah. That's right. A son of the Torah, you made the words of Torah. And I remember when I was preparing it, I got it right. <laughs> it's as if you made the words of Torah. Meaning, not just you made the person, and he's taking from God's words of Torah. No, no, it's as if you made the words of Torah. You have a hand in not just creating him as a person, but creating, creating the Torah itself. And that's why he quotes the verse. You'll keep the words of my covenant, the Zeus of this, but you'll do them. Literal meaning is you will do them, you'll do the acts that the Torah prescribes. But he's saying, he's homiletically translating the words, you will have made those words. You will have made that covenant. By teaching Torah, it's not just that you've made the person and you brought him into the covenant, but you've made the covenant itself. You made the words of the covenant itself, you've made the words of Torah. Is that because this is prior to us actually receiving Torah? No, this is post Torah study. Right now, here today in 2019. No, I'm saying, what are you saying to about Avram? Well, that, that was the first statement. The first statement, which says that he made them, that comes from before, from the before the giving of Torah. It's true, but I don't know that it's limited to that. 
doesn't seem like it is. Okay. He's just using that as a sample, as a model. Then the second statement is not just you made the person, but you made the words of Torah themselves, which means you have a, almost a hand in creating the divinity. It's a much deeper thing. Right? It's not just your, you know, one could say, look, the words of Torah are the words of Torah. They remain, remain as they are. And then I'm lucky enough to bring someone into that covenant. Okay? It's one element, which means I did the below to above part. I brought the person into it. I made him. Now he's adding, you've also done the above to below part. You made the words of Torah. Because the words of Torah in and of themselves, without a Jew learning and connecting to them, are beautiful, lofty, but are lacking the main reason for what they were created, for, for why God even spoke them. God spoke the words of Torah for the Jew. That's what it's for. It's for connection to the Jew. So when you make that, it's not just you made the person, but you made the words of Torah itself too. It's beautiful. It's an unbelievable thing. God's granting us the capacity to make His words, to make His end of the covenant, not just our end of the covenant. When I study Torah, I make my end of the covenant with God. When I teach somebody else Torah, first of all, I've made him into the covenant. Number two, I brought God into His covenant. So I've made the words of God, as it were. It's a beautiful thing. Um, Rav Amar Rav says, Ki ilu aso la'atzmai. He says, if he made them for himself. So, it, 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 it's perhaps in the context of what I was saying earlier, it could be a means that even if I'm lacking my lishmo, even if I'm lacking my proper attitude in studying Torah, but because I taught somebody else, it's as if I made me. In other words, I get dragged into the, in other words, if I taught somebody else Torah, I have the, I have the wrong attitude. And I feel good about myself but he goes on to study Torah for the proper intention, then I get uh, connected to God on his level through him because I've taught him that Torah, even though I myself might be lacking it. So it's ke'ilu asol atzma, as if I made it for myself. Whatever level he reaches, the student is as if I've made myself in that place, vicariously. Shunem the verse reads, the same verse before, which says, if I see some oisim, you will make them. So in the previous statement, we said that Vasisam Oysim means you will make the words of Torah. Now he's adding, I'll take your Oysim, don't read it Oysim, make them, the words of Torah, Ela Atem, yourselves. Asisam Atem, you made yourselves by, by uh, promulgating the covenant with somebody else, you have made yourself vicariously into his relationship with Hashem as well. And the same thing is true, says the Gemara, with respect to a mitzvah. And with that, we'll conclude today's Gemara. Amar Bora Bo says, Kala Ma'asas Chavel Dvar Mitzvah. Anyone who makes or encourages a friend to do a mitzvah, my love of kosov, the verse considers the kilo asah as if you yourself were part of that action. You yourself were part of the doing of the mitzvah even though you didn't do it to somebody else who did it. Shunem the verse reads, um, God tells Avram, God tells Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm sorry, uh, to take a stick and um, and you should go, he's telling him to go and, and, and uh, go on a mission and do it in front of all the people. Right, I think it's during the burning bush. No, it's Zion's later. But anyway, God tells the God tells Avra, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu to take the stick. No, it's much later. Was when he has to hit the stone. When he has to, water. it's much much later when he has to take the rock. When he has to get the water out of the stone. But God tells him to take his stick. And what does God say? Take umatcha shahik yisubaysayar. Take the stick with which you hit the river to turn it into blood, the Nile River into blood. So it says the Gemara. End quote from the verse. Says the Gemara. Did Moshe hit the river to make it into blood? He didn't. But like Aaron, Nico, Aaron hit the hit the river, hit the river, and yet God tells Moshe, "Take the stick which with with which you hit the river." This must, therefore must come to teach you. Anybody who makes somebody else do a mitzvah, it's as if you yourself did the mitzvah. And here Moshe Rabbeinu encouraged and uh, created the the uh, brought about this the circumstance under which. Aaron has the capacity to go, you take the stick and hit the river. So therefore later on when God tells Moshe to take the stick, he tells him, take the stick which you hit the river, even though he himself didn't do it, but because he encouraged it, he he um he gets the he gets the credit as he were. It's as if he did it himself. So in summary, we have two parts of this Gemara. The first part of the Gemara is the proper attitude in Torah study. That a person's attitude should be not for his own sake, but rather for the sake of heaven. That is He's studying Torah with the intention that with every line I learn, I'm connecting to Hashem. And from that regard, it doesn't matter if you're smarter or less smarter, no more, no less, more, it doesn't matter. So long as you're studying Torah with that attitude, all the things happen. Which is, as we described, bringing perfection to this world, reaching the infinite, and bringing the Mashiach itself. Because you're 
you, you are living out the purpose for which the world was created, which is the development of your personal relationship with Hashem through the study of Torah. And the second thing that comes along is, notwithstanding your failings or you're not your failings, teaching somebody else and encouraging someone, to do mit- someone else to do mitzvahs should not be contingent on whether or not you have the right attitude, but rather on the results. And if the results are that person learns, and if the result is, result is that person does mitzvahs, as a result of what you're doing, then you have part and parcel in that as well. Both from below to above, you're creating the person, and from above to below, you're creating the words of Torah itself. It's an absolutely wonderful and incredible thing, uh, which the lessons of which are self-evident. Have a wonderful day, everybody.